Hi, in this short new features video we will take a look at Dynamo 3.2.1 which is shipped with the latest release of Revit 2025.2. We will then take a look at some of the new platform features of Dynamo as well as some Revit specific nodes that will allow us to access linked models and the elements within. Ok, let's get started. So, I have Dynamo running and the first thing you'll notice here is we have a new home screen. This is similar to what we would see in Revit and the majority of other Autodesk softwares. So you can see now we have some commonality between these Autodesk platforms. Just like we have in Revit, we have a grid view here which would allow us to show images of each of the uh, Dynamo scripts that I've been uh, recently working on here. Or we can click on list view to see a list of those recent files as well. Looking on the left hand side panel, you'll notice here that we can access samples and also learning materials directly from the home screen, as well as web pages such as the discussion forums, the Dynamo website, the primer and so forth. Ok, so to start, let's now look at another new feature which is Dynamo templates. So what I'd like to do is start with a specific template. To do this, we can select the file menu and we can go to open and you'll now notice we can open from a template. In the Open Dynamo Definition dialog, we can then select our desired template. So here's one I've prepared here uh, for symmetry. So let's go ahead and open this one here. And we can now see, of course, that we're in a new Dynamo file, but it's actually opened up with the template itself. So of course here you can see I've got some common nodes, I've got some Python interfaces as well, so I can access the Rhino API for example, and in this case the Robot API. Let's now take a look at the node library itself. So of course we can zoom in and out of the node library by holding down the control key. And what I'd like to just show you here is some of the new icons that we've now got. So opening up the input shelf, you'll now notice that we have a slightly different look and feel for the sub menus. And for example, if I go into the basic uh, sub menu here, you'll see that we have a complete new repaint on all of the icons. This gives us a much better resolution for each of these images. So of course, if we do want to zoom out so we can see more of the node library, we can still recognize and display these images. Another thing is that the node library is using smaller gaps and spaces between each of the tools so that we can fit more of them into the node library itself. So while we're here actually looking at the input and basic shelf, we've got a nice new node here called Custom Selection. If I select this and zoom up on it, you'll notice here that we have a drop down menu that the user can select from. Now, this is all completely customizable and it really gives us the option of creating like list boxes inside Dynamo. So to access this, we can click on the drop down menu here and you'll notice that by default, we've got these uh, three different options here. Of course, we can actually remove these and we can add them um, as required. So for example, if I wanted to have a selection in here, so I could actually select, for example, a primary, a secondary or a tertiary beam member, I can type those options in here. Okay, and what we'll do here is we'll put in the codes for these. So the primary element might be uh, zero, uh, secondary element might be one, for example. And then we'll do one more for the tertiary. And perhaps here we'll give this the code of two. So once we've got that data populated into the custom selection node, okay, so now if we go to the drop down, we can see that we have primary, secondary, and tertiary. Of course, if I run this, I then get the value returned to me. Now these values can be strings as well if we wanted to, so let's say that I um, required a string output from these, I could just put in some values inside there, and again when I run that you'll see that I get the string instead of the integer which we had before. So of course this is great to actually have inside uh, Dynamo and it will be and it will be particularly useful when using Dynamo Player. So we actually have a list box where the user can select specific items from that list. So let's now have a look at some specific nodes here to allow us to access Revit linked elements. So in the background of the model here, I have a couple of architectural models that are linked in. So if I go to the Manage tab and we just have a look at Manage Links inside here, we can see that we've got a couple of files linked in. Okay, so let's say that I want to be able to access those. First thing we'll do here is we'll go to the Revit shelf. Uh, we'll open up the selection tree inside here. And what we want to do is select all elements of a class. 
We'll then go ahead and open up the Element Classes selector, and in here we want to go ahead and select Revit Linked Elements. And here you can see I've got Revit Link Instance, and if I link those together and we run the tool, we can now see that we've got the link instances reported from the file. So let's now look at some of the new nodes that we've got. So if I open up the uh, Elements menu underneath the Revit shelf, and looking down through the sub menu here, you can see that we've got a dedicated menu in here for the link instance. So what I'm going to do first is get all elements of a category. So of course what we can do is feed in those elements into here. So that's going to now feed in these two link instances. And then we'll create a list of categories that we actually want to use. So I'm just going to use a, a code block uh, for this. So let's say I want to get all of the doors out of the model. So we'll create a collector for that so we want to use the category and of course we want to go by names inside here okay and this will be doors going okay, to save me type in all of that again I can just copy that to the clipboard and we'll paste that down a couple of times so we'll also want windows and we also want um, walls in this case okay so I want all of this uh, concatenated together. So let's just call it um, cat equals, and then we'll basically join those elements together. Okay, and of course in here, I now want a list. So we want to join uh, doors. Um, yep, I need to rename these of course. So that will be windows, and this will be walls. So let's just change those variable names there. So we've got doors. Uh, windows and walls. Okay, so we'll close the square bracket and we'll close the main bracket. Okay, and that hopefully if we run it will give us those categories. Okay, so now feeding that into the link all instances here and we'll get all the, uh, all the elements of the categories. Running that you can now see that we've got all of those doors, windows and walls. And of course, a uh, nice little workflow for structure there would be to then um, copy those openings, so those windows and doors, directly into our structural model. Okay, so I um, said this would be a quick video, and it's just to showcase some of the new platform changes to Dynamo, as well as some of the specific Revit nodes that we've got now to access those linked model instances. Okay, hope that was useful, and speak to you soon.